Hi, I'm Lucy from So Essential and today we're going to be talking about interfacing. So, it's not the sexiest part of sewing, but it is super important and in this video I'll give you a good overview and understanding and lots of top tips for getting good results. Everything I share with you on this video is available on our website and I'll pop links to all the products I mentioned below and you'll also find a link to our newsletter for a weekly dose of sewing inspiration straight to your inbox. So, so what is interfacing? It's a substance that is applied to fabric to give it extra body or structure and it also can give it extra stability in high stress areas as well. So I'll just show you some examples on this lovely shirt that I made many years ago. I used a lovely lightweight crepe drapey fabric but in the areas like the collar and also the cuffs you need more stability and more structure and that's where the interfacing comes in and it's also often applied to facings which are used to often finish necklines and sit inside the garments it's it's meant to be invisible and it's hidden inside the fabric and inside the garments um, but it just gives it that stability and structure very often it's used on um, plackets for buttonholes as well to give those more stability um, because they're like a high stress area when you're undoing buttons and that sort of thing so that's what it's used for and there are hundreds of different types on the market and, and what we've got on our website by no means covers them all but it's a really good well-rounded range. I've been sewing for eight or nine years, I've made a really wide range of garments now and all of my needs have always been covered by what we've got on our website. So we've got a section that's more um, aimed at dressmaking, and covers all the interfacings you'd need for those sort of standard dressmaking projects. And then we've also got a section on the website that's more aimed at tailoring and includes some more specialist tapes and that sort of thing um, and sort of firmer um, types of interfacing for all your tailoring needs too. There's three main types of interfacing. You've got your woven interfacing, which has got a grain line and the fibres of the fabric are woven together. I'm not sure whether the camera is picking that up, but very faintly you can see a grain line running through there. And you just need to make sure that's going in the same direction as the grain line on your fabric. There is non-woven interfacings like this white one and that bonds or felts the fibres together. There's no grain line on this one and it's not as strong as the woven one. So some people say just use this on crafty projects or muslins because it doesn't stand up to washing as well either. However, I will say that I've used this particular one on absolutely loads of dressmaking projects and it's always worked really well, but it is a high quality Visaline one. We only sell really good quality interfacings on our website and I've always made sure I've applied it properly as well, but I'll give you more tips on that later in the video. So we've got our woven and non-woven and then here we've got our stretch or knit interfacing which has stretch in it so that it will stop your knits from stretching out of shape but it will allow them to move and stretch as they need to because obviously if you want to put a stretch t-shirt or something on you need it to the fabric to be able to stretch and move to get it over your head and to get it onto your body but then you want it to retain its shape and that's what the knit interfacing will help you to do. So another consideration is whether you're going to use a fusible or a sew-in interfacing. So you can get the ones that are fusible and you apply heat with the iron to fuse those to the fabric, or you can get sew-in interfacings, which you sew into the fabric in the, within the seam allowance. Now, for most dressmaking projects, fusible is absolutely fine, and that's what I have always used on all of my dressmaking projects. But there are times where you might want to use a sew-in interfacing. If you do use Use a sewing interfacing just remember there will be three layers that you're working with you'll have the two layers of fabric and then you'll have the interfacing which you'll sandwich between the two layers of fabric if you're an inexperienced sewer you might want to uh, tack the interfacing to one of the layers of fabric and then stitch the other layer of fabric together just a little tip there 
But when it comes to sewing interfacing, really the times when it's useful is if you are working with a very textured fabric where the glue won't bond very well to the fabric. If you're working with a heat sensitive fabric where pressing the fusible interfacing to the fabric would damage it. If you're working with something with a nap, like a velvet perhaps, and pressing it will crush the nap of the fabric, you might not want to use a fusible one then. Or if you're working with a fabric with a very open weave, sometimes the glue um, won't really work very well and it might seep through to the right side as well. So there are just some examples of when you might want to use a sewing interfacing. But as I said, you know, I've been sewing for a long time. I've sewn a lot of garments and for general, dressmaking projects, I always use and have always used fusible interfacing. I'm just going to give you a quick overview of the key dressmaking interfacings in our range. So we've got H180, which I showed you earlier, which is designed for lightweight fabrics, small parts of blouses and shirts. It's great for fabrics like viscose and acetate and cupro. It's a non-woven interfacing and I've used this on most of my dressmaking projects. Then as an alternative to that, we've got a woven um, H785, which again is designed for lightweight fabrics. It's got a slight stretch to it and it's great for those fabrics I mentioned earlier again. And again, I've used this on lots of my dressmaking fabrics and some people find that this is less sticky um, with the iron. That one can be a bit sticky with the iron, whereas this one tends to be not so much, but that is a woven interfacing. Then I wanted to show you H250. This is for fusing shaped waistbands, belts and crafts, and it's for heavy to medium weight fabrics. Then we've got the Admiral Stretch, which I showed you earlier, which is for knit and jersey fabrics, and it's stretchier and lighter weight than the alternative, which is 770, G770. I've used this for all of my knit projects, um, but if you've got a sort of heavier knit that you're working with, you might want to use G770, which is designed for um, medium to heavyweight fabrics. And you can also use that on woven fabrics as well. And then finally, I've just included H410, although this is in the tailoring section, of our interfacing section on the website. I have used this in dressmaking. Generally, it's for coats and jackets and that sort of thing um, in light to medium weight fabrics, but recently I used it on a skirt waistband made from suiting fabric and it just gave me real stability in that area um, and a really nice sort of structure to, to that sort of fitted skirt that I was making. So that just gives you an overview of the different types that we've got and they all come in different colours as well so you should be able to get most of them in black and white and then some of them you'll be able to get in this beige colour as well. So the decision making process for which interfacing to use goes something like this. First of all, do you want a woven, a non-woven or a knit interfacing, you know, based on which fabric you're working with? Second of all, do you want to use a fusible or a sew-in interfacing? Third of all, you need to choose an interfacing that's about the same sort of weight or slightly lighter weight than the fabric that you're working with. And then finally, you just need to choose the colour interfacing. So usually they come in black, white or a beige colour. So you just pick whichever colour is going to be least visible with the fabric that you're working with. So now onto my top tips for interfacing. First of all, always wash your fabric first before you apply your interfacing, although I'd always recommend pre-washing fabrics anyway. Also, get all the interfacing out of the way first. I used to go through the project and add the interfacing at each step, but you just end up running backwards and forwards to the ironing board. And actually, although it's a boring job, it is better to just get it all in, out of the way at the beginning, and then you can enjoy the sewing. If you've got a particularly fluid fabric, like this lovely viscose fabric I've got here, another great tip can be to cut out your pattern pieces in the interfacing first, and then apply that to the fabric, 
and then cut round the interfacing because if it's a particularly fluid fabric and you cut the pieces out of the fabric and then you cut them out separately out of the interfacing very often you'll find they won't match up properly whereas if you do it this way everything will match and the interfacing is more stable than the fluid fabric so that's going to be more accurate anyway always test on scraps first just to make sure you're happy with the results first and when you apply interfacing we always press so hold the iron down don't move it around like you would when you're ironing the cl your clothes it's the same as when you're pressing seams you wouldn't move the iron around you want to place it down and lift it up and move it so that's always really important to remember um, sometimes the iron can be too hot and interfacing can stick and to avoid that you can use a pressing cloth so I've got um, some silk organza we've got on the website I'll pop a link to this below with all the interfacing links but it's a sheer fabric that will withstand high temperatures and you can just place that over the top and then that will prevent any stickiness and just protect your iron and your fabric um, but yeah if we just press this now and apply it you just need to make sure once you've done that that it's properly fused because it's so so easy to not fuse it properly and then to find that round the edges some of the bits haven't stuck properly so I always just give it a little check round the edges just make sure everything's stuck if I find anywhere that curls up slightly I just go over it again with the iron and that's a good little tip there you can see here I haven't fused that end so it's not stuck properly but round here just check round the edges and make sure that you haven't missed any bits also just let the interfacing cool once you've applied it if you move the fabric before the interfacing's had chance to cool that can create bubbles in the interfacing and then finally if you want to protect your ironing board a little tip that may martin gave me many years ago at a sewing event was to use an oven liner on your ironing board and that will prevent any sticky bits from ending up on your ironing board cover also it's just worth mentioning if you haven't got enough interfacing left to create the full piece but you've got some scraps you can just join them together like so just bear in mind that if it's a particularly sheer fabric you might be able to see that join so you just need to apply a bit of logic there um, and one last tip as well if you find your interfacing is really wrinkled I store mine in a bag at home and it does get quite wrinkled you can just soak it in water and then hang it to dry um, and that will remove any wrinkles so I hope you enjoyed that whistle stop tour of all things interfacing. I hope you feel nice and confident now about why you need to use it, how to choose the right one, what things to think about. Do tell me in the comments if you've got any tips or things you'd like to share or you'd like to know more about. I'm always interested to hear from you. And if you like what you see today, please like and subscribe and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.